here's our scenario. I have a mileage tracker on my a tracker on my iPhone that records all of my movements for uh, mileage purposes for business. It allows me to download reports on a periodic basis, and they wind up as CSV files in a folder on my hard drive. I want to take that data and surface it in Power BI because it's a whole lot easier to consume. And I want to keep it up to date whenever I add the file. I want the data in Power BI to reflect that. So let's walk through the process of making all of that happen. The first thing we need to do is obviously connect to uh, Power BI and get Power BI Desktop. So I'm just going to quickly go into app.powerbi.com. I'm going to sign in as myself. And I have two-step verification turned on, of course, so if I'm going to have to enter in a code. And I'm signing it. We load up the Power BI and I'm taken to my default dashboard, which is a Google Analytics view of my blog. Um, and I'm going to come up here. First thing I want to do, if I don't already have it, is get the Power BI desktop. So I'm just going to click on that link and it's going to download into my downloads folder. Now, I have already done that, so I'm just going to cancel this download. And I'm going to open up my downloads folder and launch the Power BI desktop. That's opening up off screen. So I'm just going to bring it over out here onto the screen. I've hit next. It's a next, next, OK, cancel install. I'm going to go ahead and accept the terms of the license agreement, of course, without reading them. Does anyone ever read these things? Uh, next, next, and install. I'm going to let that go ahead and install. I'm going to pause the recording here, and we'll come back when it's finished. And now the installation's finished. I'm just going to go ahead and launch Power BI Desktop by selecting Finish. And up it comes in behind my browser, but up it comes. Okay, so right off the bat, we're presented with the option of uh, going and getting data or just closing this window off and, and working from scratch. We're going to go ahead and get some data. And one of the things we want to do is load from a folder. So you can see the Power BI can load from Excel, XML, text, etc., etc. But it can also load data straight from a folder. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to connect. It's going to ask me to select a folder. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to open up my personal OneDrive folder. This is where I store it in a folder called Data and Mileage. I'm going to click OK and OK. And it's going to go and scan that folder, and it sees that there's two files in there right now. Now, I'm going to want to do more than just load the metadata for the file. So I'm going to click on Edit, and that's going to take us into our Power Query Editor. Let's drag it over to the main screen here. And from here, we want to drill into the content of the file. We can do that here. If you look at the content column that uh, Power BI has, uh, has used, uh, when it pulled in the file information. You can see that's actually the, the file itself. So I want to drill down into it. I'm going to pick that. And you can see we actually get the, uh, uh, the data itself. So you can see this is showing um, on an, uh, for both files in that file folder. It's iterating through all of the files, all of the mileage. Now one of the things right off the bat, you can see that the first row is actually the, the column titles. That's easy enough to, to set up. We can simply go in here and we can say used first row as header. So I, we clicked on the little table icon to the left of all of the columns. And I'm just going to say use first row as headers. OK. Now another thing for this visualization, I'm only interested in my business data, not my personal data. And personal data is showing up here as other. So I'm going to take the purpose column. And I'm just going to uh, deselect everything. And I'm going to select business and click OK. And now you can see all of the trips that were taken based on business. Now that uh, that's been selected, uh, you can see that all of the values are business. I don't need this column anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it. Remove. And I'm going to get rid of vehicle. I'm only dealing with one vehicle here. I'm going to hit remove. And you can see, again, all of the journeys. Now, uh, the, the tool itself will calculate any expenses. I don't use this for any expenses, so I don't need that column either. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that. However, I do want uh, a column that's based on the uh, on the charge rate for, uh, per kilometer. 
However, if we look at the distance column, if we select it, we can see up at the top that the data type is type text. We can't perform mathematical operations on a text field. But these are, in fact, all numbers. All we need to do is manually change the type. We're going to change it to a decimal number. And now we're going to go up here to add column. We're going to add a custom column. We're going to call it charge. And we're going to use the distance as a base. And we're simply going to multiply that by 0 0.46, 46 cents per kilometer. And bang, we get, a, we get a, a number out of that. But actually, it only looks like a number field. In fact, if you look up at the top, the data type is set to any. Uh, basically meaning we're not specifying the data type at all. We should come down here and pick decimal number so that when we load it into the model, the model editor doesn't have to guess what data type we're dealing with. Likewise, if we look over here, we have a date column. Let's just select that. Once we select it, we can see it's flagged as data type text. Well, in fact, it's a date. We should flag it as such. And I do that. You can see that it shifts to the right-hand side. But now, when we load into the data model, it's going to know what data type we, we're working with. And to load it into the data model, we go ahead here and we go up to Close and Apply. And the data has been loaded into the model. We'll see this if we click on the model editor. You can see all of the data we were working with previously, including that charge column that was calculated. Now, one thing about the charge column, it's a currency field. We couldn't control the formatting of that right within uh, Power Query, but we can within the model editor. We wa always want this to show up as a, as a currency field, so we're just going to click on that currency icon, and we're going to pick the dollar symbol. And there you have it. We have uh, exactly what our charge rates were for all of these trips uh, in, the, in the data model. So from here, we could go ahead and establish some, any relationships we have with other data. We don't have any right now. We just want a quick visualization of, uh, of, of what our data looks like. So I'm going to click back up here on, on Report, and we're going to build a quick visualization. I might want to see how much, uh, 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 how much I'm driving uh, for business, so we'll quickly pull in a column chart. We'll just use a stack column chart. I'll click here. And we're going to look in our model for what we want to show. And it's going to be a very, very simple chart. We're going to use date along the x-axis. And we're going to use dis uh, distance in kilometers. Now, Power BI is smart about date. If you look here under our axis uh, section, you can see it's showing a full hierarchy. Date, year, quarter, month, and day. Uh, I'm going to use a little drop down here and say maybe I don't want to show the hierarchy, maybe I want to show the date. Well, that's not exactly what I want either. In fact, what I want, I don't want to show the year. Let's go back to the date hierarchy. I really just want to show month and day. So what I'm going to do is des deselect day, uh, or sorry, year and quarter. And this is more what I'm after. So a month by month comparison of, of, of mileage patterns here. And I'm going to come down here just below. And I'm going to put in a simple table because I actually want to see the, the, the detail of the data uh, I'm working with. And I'm just going to drag this over here. And I want to show the date. I want to show the... Oh, so I should have had that visualization selected when I selected those. So, boom. I want to show the... I want to use the date. I want to uh, show the distance. I want to show the end uh, collection... Or, so end location. Uh, I want to show any notes that may be there, and I want to show the charge amount. So we can see, bang, we've got a really quick report here. Um, as uh, Of course, it's Power BI, so everything is cross-filterable. Anything we select, you can see the, uh, the detail table uh, uh, is, is reflected accordingly. And we're ready to save it up to Power BI. To do that, I'm just going to go up to the ribbon. I'm going to go ahead and select Publish. Yes, I want to save my changes. I'm going to have to change, uh, save that off into a folder. I'm going to put that in that same mileage folder that I was using before. So, uh, where do we have it? Uh, OneDrive, Personal, Data, Mileage, and Mileage Report. Let me go ahead and go ahead and hit Save. And I need to sign into my Power BI account if I'm not already. Apparently, I'm not. So I'll go ahead and do that. And once I've signed in, the report will publish. And there we have it. Um, we have success. 
and an op one of the options is to go ahead and open it in Power BI. I'm going to do that. And you can see that we're loading data. And it takes us directly to our report in Power BI. And you can see in the browser it's working exactly as we would expect it to. Now we also want to keep this data set up to date. That is to say, we want to uh, update the dashboard if we add a new file into the folder. The way we would normally do is to schedule a, res uh, a refresh for the data source. The way we, uh, where you can find that by going into our Power BI menu, scrolling down, finding our data set. We're down here at Mileage Report, hitting the ellipsis, and hitting Schedule Refresh. Now, you can see here that uh, the system is intelligent enough to tell us that we're not going to be able to refresh this data source without having a personal gateway installed. We can install that. There's a couple of ways we can get at it. We can come up here and uh, go into Power BI Gateways, but there's a link right here for Install Now, and that's going to take us to a web, uh, or sorry, to the, to the download site for the gateway. I've already downloaded the gateway, so I'm just going to hit Cancel. And I'm going to go into the download folder and launch it. And it's launched on another screen. I'm just going to drag it over here so we can see. <clears throat> and it's, again, going through a fairly straightforward installation process, a next, next, cancel sort of thing. I paused the recording there so you didn't have to wait two minutes for the installation. But uh, at this point in time, again, it's a next, next, cancel. So we hit next. Next. Accept the terms, of course. Next. Where do we want to install it? Go ahead and install it there. And we're done. That's really all there is to it. Uh, we've got it installed. Now we need to launch it and we're going to configure it. So I clicked on the launch button there. And you can see we need to sign into PowerBI.com. I'm just going to click there, enter my credentials. And again, enter in a verification code. And OK, and away we go. So right off the bat, we can now see it, that the service can see that we've got our, uh, our Power BI gateway, our personal gateway installed, but it still can't do a refresh because it doesn't know who I am. I just hit refresh, and we're going to go in here now and edit my credentials. It's basically saying, here's the path we know you need to get to. How are you going to authenticate? How, uh, how are we going to know who to connect as? And I just need to now sign in. I'm going to enter in credentials. They're going to be stored securely within the Power BI service. Now it used single sign-in, knows who I am, so now we're ready to go. We can go ahead and schedule our refresh. I'm going to say keep the date up to date. Yes, we're going to re uh, refresh it daily. Um, what's our time zone? What's our? Uh, we can add a specific time. I'm going to say let's refresh this thing at 10. 30 a.m. Apply, and away we go. And I've also got this box selected here. Say it's send refresh failure notification email. So if I can't do a refresh for any reason, I'm going to receive an email. So next up, we obviously want to test it. Uh, to do that, I have got a obvious outlier in a file that I'm going to take from here and just move it up here. I'm going to put it into the same folder with my other uh, file. So this is to simulate adding another uh, log file, just a single log file in, in this case. But it's got a fairly obvious uh, outlier. We've got a trip from uh, Mars to Venus. So I'm just going to drag that out of the way. And we're going to go from here. We're going to go into our Power BI menu. I'm going to scroll down to Data Sources. And I'm well. Actually, first I'm going to go back up to our original mileage report. So here is mileage report. So we can see what it is right now. 
Uh, I'm going to scroll down here and go into mileage report, hit this little ellipsis beside mileage report and just click refresh now. And you'll see in the upper right hand corner it says preparing for re refresh for a second. And then uh, while it's doing the refresh, you can see if you look at the mileage report entry in the menu, you see this little spinning icon to the left of it. And that's going to go on for just a, a, a moment. That looks like it's done now. Uh, we haven't seen any change in the report because it doesn't automatically update immediately. It would if we were out for a while, it's, but it, we're working out of cache data. But all we have to do is hit this refresh button and we should see an immediate uh, significant change to our data set and we do. We see December was a very big month for travel, about 15 million kilometers and here we have the entry that, that shows up uh, at the right date, the same date that we put in, in the workbook uh, with, with the new data. So you can see that the refresh is working. In this case it wasn't scheduled, we did it manually, but it works either way through the gateway. So we've gone, um, we've gone from nothing, uh, just having a set of common delimited files, We've created a data model. We've uploaded it into Power BI. Uh, we're able to.